What up, gang of language? Carolina Jackpot Time coming at you. It is April the 16th. It's just a little bit after 10 in the morning. Hope you guys and gals are doing well today. Oh, we say it all the time, don't we? And it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Oh, God, I can't believe it's July or 4th already. I can't believe it's football season already. Well, I can't believe that it's almost the middle slash end of April already. And it's time for the South Carolina spring game. That's going to be Saturday night in williams Bryce Stadium. Uh, I, I'm not going to be in attendance at that event. I had earlier hoped that maybe I could go down there for it. Uh, I'm not even going to be able to watch it on TV. It's streaming over on the ESPN Plus app. Uh, that, that's not why I'm not going to be able to watch it, that I don't have streaming service. i got to work. So uh, I'll be working with a man, but I'll you know give my thoughts on it afterwards. What am I looking for from that spring game? Well, there's a number of things, and uh, you know, some of these things I've kind of taken away from what I've read about the Gamecocks in uh, the spring, just through the scrimmages and the practices that I've read over on the uh, message boards and such. And just other things that I saw last year that I'd like to see improved upon this year. And I mean, there's a lot. Uh, I mean, there's a lot. I couldn't put it all into one video really first of all i would i want to see the quarterback play from lenore stones want to see what he's got going on how has he progressed in a year yeah and last year we really didn't get to see a whole lot of it right guy threw four passes uh, on the season just played in just a handful of games so it was a really small sample size that we saw of him Reports that I'm seeing, they say that he's not that he's not struggling throwing the football, but that maybe he still needs a little bit more work in terms of being able to operate an offense, being able to operate an effective passing game. So, is that cause for a, oh god? I mean, you know, drop the baby and let's run, find a new team to pull for? No. But at the same time, you'd also kind of like to think that being as we're in year two in the program, that we'd have a little bit better of a command on that by now. There's, look, there's going to be a drop-off. There's going to be a drop-off in the passing game. You don't have the dominant wide receiver that you had last year in Xavier Leggett. Of course, Xavier Leggett didn't emerge as a dominant wide receiver until the season started. Nobody knew that this guy was going to be the beast that he was. He he released the ball beast within himself last year, and nobody saw that coming. Uh, everybody thought we were going to see that kind of season from Juice Wells, and well, we're not. We ain't going to go down that road anymore. I've done uh, talked about him enough and wasted enough of my breath on him in these videos. But is somebody going to emerge as that same playmaking wide receiver for us this year? Things I'm seeing is that the young man who transferred in from Miami of Ohio, Gage Larvaden, is a smaller type back, but he's a playmaker, and he's the kind of guy who can take one to the house. He's the kind of guy who can kind of maybe not take the top off of a defense, but uh, definitely give a defense some problems. Jared Brown's another guy who came in from Coastal Carolina, and he was kind of looked as, you know, they, they took, I think, like three wide receivers. He was kind of looked at as uh, the, maybe like the gem of that bunch. And while I haven't seen anything negative about him this spring, I haven't seen anything really positive as well, like that he's that he's really been impressive, that he's, uh, he's oh, sorry, Joe, that's one you better watch this fall. It's, no, I haven't seen that yet. So maybe he's having a little bit of a hard time adjusting uh, maybe he's not as good as you know he was advertised to be or maybe it's something else uh running back wise i want to see what these uh guys that we got out of the transfer portal there have done uh, also some of the young cats that we brought in uh dj braswell was one that i tell i don't i can't i, I can't even remember if this guy is hurt or if he's been practicing or not um, I know Rocket Sanders is not, he's not practiced at all, so he won't play. 
in the spring game. Um, however, Jaward Howell, the young man from South Carolina State, he's really impressed uh, a lot of the coaching staff and has looked pretty good in spring practice drills. We want to see what uh, he can do uh, against the first team defense. I also want to see uh, this young man from North Texas, uh, Oscar Attaway. Uh, he's an older player uh, who was there for several years. Uh, he's had a few injury problems in his career, but I think it's, <laughs> if you were to, to, to to put gun to jackpot's head right now, I mean, I think that guy's probably um, the starter. Uh, Juju McDowell is another one who they said, well, he's not going to be there for spring practice. I didn't even think he was going to practice anyway. He broke his collarbone late in the season last year. Apparently, he's injured it again. So, uh, that's disheartening to hear. <sighs> But I'm looking for that. I think South Carolina will be in good shape in the tight end room. Uh, the young man from uh, last year, uh, Josh Simon, who was a transfer from Western Kentucky the year before, pretty productive when he was on the field last year. And then you have uh, Brady Cook, not Brady Cook, Brady Hunt. Uh, Brady Cook plays from Missouri. Brady Hunt, the uh, guy from Ball State who has. Uh, yeah, it's just crazy the way these damn videos go anymore, isn't it? It's crazy. I mean, and I'm much the same as the way anybody does their videos. We have to talk about the, and think about where did this guy come from? Where did he come from? And it, it is, it's it's something to keep up with. It is absolutely something to keep up with. Brady Hunt was very productive at my at was he at Miami of Ohio? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I think he was. No, Ball State. He's from Ball State. The other kids from Miami of Ohio. I can't remember which MAC team goes with which player. A very productive player. I want to see what he can do. Oh, uh, of course, the offensive line was a huge issue last year with a lot of injuries and that. If they play well on Saturday night, I think it's a good sign. And I don't think that it's a good sign because you've got a shitty defensive line. South Carolina's defensive line, especially the interior, should be in pretty good shape. Um, edge rushers, I, once again, you got some new pieces there. I want to see how those fit. Heard some good things about Kyle Kennard, the guy who transferred in from Georgia Tech. Um, we want to see uh, also with that interior, Tonka Hemingway, Alex Boogie Huntley. Those have been good players for us. Hopefully that trend will continue. Uh, the linebackers, Bam Martin Scott was a guy who emerged last year as a kind of, uh, you know, a, a heavy hitter late in the season. And then, of course, Debo Williams, who uh, has led the team in tackles, should be solid there in the middle as well again. Looking forward to seeing what's going on in the defensive backfield with the cornerbacks, O'Donnell Fortune. Uh, slated to play one of the cornerback positions, but the others, you kind of, we've got a, uh, a lot of young kids there. Vakari Swain is one whose name comes to mind that they've kind of bounced in and out and been rotating around in uh, those cornerback positions. That's uh, kind of a concern for Carolina Jackpot. Uh, defensively, I think South Carolina is going to be improved this year. Do I think they're going to be much improved? Well, I think they're going to be much improved over what you saw early in the season last year. That was That was just absolutely horrible. That was an absolutely horrible performance the first six, seven games of the season. They did come on somewhat at the end of the year. Now, I'm, you know, a glass half empty kind of guy. And, you know, I like to uh, kind of play the, the devil's advocate a little bit. Is that because they were playing some teams in Vanderbilt in Kentucky? And, yes, even you, Clemson, who can't move the ball. I, I don't know. I guess we'll kind of find that stuff out this year. I mean, they're returning nine starters on that side of the ball. It should be a solid unit. I mean, I never thought that Clayton White was a horrendous defensive coordinator coming in. I mean, I was. I thought he was at least average at best. We know Torian Gray, who coaches the corners and stuff up, uh, is a good position coach. But uh, 
quite I, I you know it's kind of up in the air on him for a while and then last year i'm like man this guy's he's freaking terrible he's got to go i'm just like everybody else and then they they started to gel and play a little bit better later on in the year so, uh, we'll have to see what's going on with that unit um what else what else what else uh, but yeah uh defensive line wise if we can see some push from those guys on the offensive line i think it'll be a plus for us uh, like i said they're going up against some guys who have been there a while um so if they get a good push and are able to open up some holes i think it's absolutely a good thing last year's running game was absolutely atrocious how in the hell mario anderson jr was able to pull uh 700 and something yards rushing last year i don't know uh it he broke off several long runs uh but other than that it was uh it was really tough sledding and it led to montario hardesty the running back coach getting dismissed once again uh i've talked about coaching before and i've talked about shane beamer and what I feel like, from just from the outside looking in, is his inability to make tough decisions on coaches. I, I, I don't necessarily think that Montario Hardesty was a huge problem. I, and and that's just me being an outsider looking in. I have you know made snide remarks about the Tennessee man. Of course, Montario Hardesty played for Tennessee. I really don't like many things Tennessee but in this case I don't necessarily think that Montario Hardesty did any better or worse of a job than he could have done as running backs coach just as the position coach in terms of what you got on Saturdays than he could have done last year with his guys playing behind the Shippo offensive line they're playing behind the ragtag bunch, the 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 bunt, the young bunch, the, the group of guys who were kind of put together, uh, different combinations thrown out there, I mean, forced to play a wide receiver at that position. I don't think that all was necessarily his fault. And from what I've seen, there has been very very little accountability with the uh, offensive line group and the offensive line staff. Yes, you had some injuries there, but your guys didn't, they didn't cut the mustard last year. They didn't cut the cheese either. Well, they may have, I don't know. I never smelled it, uh, but I'm sure they did. Sean Elliott gave a press conference, um, what's well, been about a week ago now. Of course, Sean Elliott, the former Gamecock assistant from Camden High School in Camden, South Carolina, is where he played his college ball at. Uh, he's also coached some at Appalachian State, or actually he played at Appalachian State, excuse me. He may have coached there a little bit too. I don't know, but uh, offensive line coach for the Gamecocks under Steve Spurrier. Coached one year under Will Muschamp after Muschamp was hired. Uh, Sean Elliott was the interim coach in between uh, Steve Spurrier quitting and Will Muschamp being hired. Uh, South Carolina actually played pretty well in several games in which he coached, uh, but they dropped a game to the Citadel, which um, kind of sealed his fate, I think, as terms of ever being able to be the head coach at South Carolina. I think that that may have actually been considered uh, for him to replace Steve Spurrier or have been given a try, a trial run. I, I don't know how you do that, um, but... Uh, when he lost to the Citadel, that was off the table. Then the next week, he went out and actually pushed a Clemson team that ended up finishing, what, they lost the national championship game to Alabama by a very slim margin and was undefeated at the time. They He actually gave them a game and then they took it into the fourth quarter. So he ended up coaching for Muschamp for one year. He left. He was the head coach at Georgia State for seven years, six, seven years, uh, left abruptly this spring. Uh, and came back to South Carolina. Uh, speculation is that he was tired of coaching a feeder program for the uh, big time schools. I mean, he, he was getting players picked off left and right all the time. Uh, Marcus Carroll, his running back for the past couple seasons, one that comes to mind, uh, goes to play for the Dork at Missouri. Uh, and Eli Drinkowitz, he'll be replacing Cody Schrader out there. 
and it's just tough. So he, he was tough and his family was living in Columbia. He comes back home. Anyway, Sean Elliott, this guy's got a huge motor, got a huge upside as far as being a, a leader, uh, as far as coaches go, a, a, a not, not really necessarily a cheerleader type, but maybe a, a, a cheerleader type with a heavy hand because he's going to get on your ass if you're screwing up. And he's let that be known. And something was concerning to Carolina Jackpot in, well, it was not so much concerning. It's more of an aha moment for Carolina Jackpot during that press conference was when he said something to the effect of, it was one of his players, and I don't know if it, he, he's, the, he's the tight ends coach, but he's also the run game coordinator, which means he's going to be working a lot with the running backs. He's also going to be working a lot with the offensive line. And he said one of the players was complaining about, man, my shoulder really hurts a lot. And he's like, man, you're going to have to, you know, hey, you know, this is football. I mean, we're going to get hurt. We're going to have hurt shoulders. We're going to have hurt uh, kneecaps. We're going to have hurt bodies. That's just part of playing the game. It's actually part of what makes it fun. So who wouldn't want to run through a brick wall for this man? But the fact that he's talking about that, to me, kind of tells a little bit of a story that, I think there was a little bit of a, uh, um, a, a a wussy culture among some of those folks, complaining, nagging injuries. Nah, I'm hurting, blah blah blah. And I don't like I said, I don't know if this was offensive line. I don't know if it was tight end. I don't know what's what. But I think him being there, the longer he is there, as the spring goes on here, as the season starts, season summer starts, summer and the season goes on, I think that him being there is not that's not only gonna toughen up the offensive line and the tight end room. I think it's gonna toughen up the entire team, especially the defensive line, the defensive players, because they feed off each other. I mean it's not that it's not it's a it's a family, but it's a brotherhood. It might be a hundred guys, but it's still tight knit, or it should be. And I think they'll all have interaction with him. And I think him being there will be nothing but a positive for South Carolina. So interested to see what uh, what he does on Saturday night as well. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below, what are you looking for from the Gamecocks in the spring game? Oh, and that nobody else gets injured. God, please, we don't need any more of that. Once again, another thing that was not addressed is in terms of just me from the outside looking in, why do you still have the same strength and conditioning coach that you had that I, I'm not going to say that he gave you multiples of multiples of multiples of injuries, but something wasn't right there. Everybody else wasn't getting hurt like that. Not every school didn't have those types of problems. So oh, we'll, we pray for no injuries in this game. Transfer portals opening up today. There's actually a live update in terms of the transfer portal right now on 24-7 sports, CBS sports. And it's crazy the way that college football has changed. I remember we used to have that same kind of live update type show that wasn't like in the form that it is now. Things were, weren't were quite as advanced what, five, six, not even a couple years ago. But we were doing a, a show on... Um, of the National Signing Day at the 1st of February. And, I mean, that's just, I mean, totally gone by the wayside anymore. Guys just commit at, at various different points in time uh, prior to, a lot of times prior to the season, even starting before what would have normally been the season that preceded that February signing day. So it's all changed, and everybody's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm just tired of watching college football. I'm tired of what it's become. And I, well, you know, I get that, too. And, and a lot of these changes I don't like. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to watch, aren't you? Because that's still my team. It doesn't matter if it's made up of some guys from Miami of Ohio and a dude from East Tennessee State and a dude from – Colorado and a dude from Louisville and a dude from Easton Badoga Community College doesn't matter. It's still my team. Uh, you know, just because television changed, you know, your grandpa probably said when they changed TV from black and white to color, they was going to stop watching. Guess what? I guarantee you, he still snuck in there and watched. He hauled them color TV. And, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna watch. You're gonna still be a college football fan. Stop it. 
just stop. Things change. You have to either change with them or you, you just totally get left behind and you're out of touch. So I plan on just changing with it. Anyway, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, guys. I will see you all later on. I appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Ah, uh ah. -uh.